Bonjour tout le monde, euh, nous allons commencer dans, dans une petite minute. On attend encore juste que les dernières personnes se connectent. On va faire comme la dernière fois, donc on va utiliser les deux langues, le français et l'anglais. En simultané, on aura une traduction, on a un peu euh, écouté votre feedback, donc euh, on essaiera une autre méthode de traduction en sous-titres. Donc on va voir si ça fonctionne mieux pour tout le monde. Et, euh, et voilà, c'est la, euh, la deuxième partie de notre séminaire en ligne. La première, euh, on s'est focalisé sur l'analyse de la situation actuelle. Aujourd'hui, nous parlerons des perspectives pour ensuite, euh, la prochaine fois, nous allons euh, parler de la pratique et de l'action, des différentes actions que nous pourrons euh, éventuellement faire. Euh, pour commencer, nous voudrions aborder tout de suite... Euh, euh, aussi la question euh, qui nous a préoccupé en tant que groupe, qui est la question de, de genre dans notre groupe. Donc, euh, comme, comme vous savez, nous sommes six personnes, dont deux euh, femmes et quatre hommes. Euh, donc, ça peut ça peut-être euh, effrayer, euh, en effrayer euh, certains qui se disent ah il n'y a pas de gender balance. En tout cas, on veut juste vous rassurer que c'est une question qui nous préoccupe en tant que groupe. On en discute entre nous. Aujourd'hui, il y aura trois présentations qui seront faites par Christian, David et Swen, donc trois hommes. Ça ne signifie pas que euh, Milena euh, euh, ou moi ne soyons pas actives également. Donc, toutes les contributions qui sont présentées aujourd'hui ont toutes été euh, pensées et travaillées en groupe. Donc, ce n'est pas parce que la personne la présente que c'est uniquement cette personne qui a travaillé là-dessus. C'est uniquement aussi une question de qui est plus confortable. Donc, in English, um, so um, we are on the second part of our um, webinar. Uh, today, we will talk about the perspectives of this crisis. We talked about the analysis the first time, and we will talk about uh, the practice uh, on our last uh, part. Um, we wanted to address something that is the gender balance uh, in our group because um, we got some feedback, but also because it's something that we've been thinking about as a group a lot. So as you know, we are uh, two girls and four boys, which doesn't look really uh, balanced. But I want to assure you that whatever we work on we do it as a group even today we will have three presentations done by men that doesn't mean that milena and me were not involved it's just a matter of who's more comfortable with what tasks but we are really open to your feedback and really hope that um, you'll help us somehow manage this situation um, donc aujourd'hui aussi on aura une première partie où on discutera comme la dernière fois on présentera um, un peu notre vision des choses pour ensuite en discuter, mais dans une dernière partie, nous ferons des petits groupes avec les gens pour pouvoir discuter. Parce que nous croyons que c'est peut-être plus facile si nous sommes des, en, en petits groupes pour pouvoir parler des choses. Comme ça, avec beaucoup de gens, parfois, certaines personnes ne sont pas forcément à l'aise pour pouvoir contribuer. Donc, il y aura un questionnaire, un petit questionnaire pour que vous puissiez choisir la langue dans laquelle vous vous exprimez le mieux, donc si c'est le luxembourgeois, l'anglais ou le français, et nous diviserons un peu les groupes, un peu comme ça linguistiquement, parce que nous croyons que c'est plus facile. We will have a poll that we will, um, uh, that, that will be available soon, where we, you can decide which language is easier for you to express, if it's English, French, or Luxembourgish, and we will uh, have groups in, in um, uh, the last part where we will discuss a few uh, things in more detail and where you can be put in the group uh, in which you are most comfortable on. Um, so, um, yeah, you must be seeing the polls now so you can select the language uh, that you prefer, vous, vous choisissez le luxembourgeois, euh, l'anglais, le français, comme vous voulez. Et nous ferons les groupes euh, 
comme ça linguistiquement parce que nous croyons simplement que c'est plus facile. Voilà. Euh, je vais faire un petit récapitulatif aussi de ce que nous avons discuté la dernière fois euh, pour que même les personnes qui n'ont pas été présentes puissent un peu accompagner parce qu'aujourd'hui, ce que, ce que nous allons discuter repose certainement un peu sur les différentes discussions que nous avons eues la dernière fois. Euh, je vais le faire en anglais, mais il y aura une traduction euh, euh, qui sera faite en, en simultané en, en français. Donc, euh, voilà. I'm, I'm going to start with an introduction. I'm going to talk quickly about what we talked last time because our conversation today will kind of um, base a bit on what was discussed last time. So um, last time on our first meeting, we focused on the analysis of what's currently happening uh, with this corona crisis, especially emphasizing on the situation in Luxembourg. We discussed about labor, about how there is this perceived moral superiority of work um, that has led to the creation of an enormous amount of unnecessary jobs whose superficiality is really visible today. We, um, we address the paradox that on the other side, we have so many system relevant jobs essential to the management of this crisis, but these are often devalued and underpaid. We underline the importance of um, women in society. Uh, a lot depends on paid and unpaid care work of women today. We talked about how labor movements and their very heavy bureaucratic apparatus all over the world will have to seize the opportunity to revitalize and revive trade union movement if they really want to survive the coming attacks that will come from, from capital. This puts also into question our Luxembourgish model of social dialogue. Then we reflected a little bit on the place of science and experts during this crisis, obviously keeping in mind that They can't be dissociated from the neoliberal capitalist system in which they are operating. We then saw um, how science did not manage to convince the world of the urgency to act with global warming, but managed to do so with the coronavirus. Um, however, we do know that the climate crisis is way worse than COVID-19 by order of magnitude. So there will be more people that will die, human and natural habitats will be changed or even completely destroyed. We asked um, the question also of property of infrastructure, seeing a very serious threat in the way all communication, teaching, but also political activism is currently and certainly for some time based on commercial networks and platforms whose ownership is concentrated in the hands of a few ultra rich people. Um, we are doing this today on Zoom and it was advertised on Facebook, so that proves it. Last but not definitely, we, uh, would, but definitely not least, we wondered how this crisis could affect the shortage um, of housing in Luxembourg, stating the very worrying obvious that Luxembourgish housing model lacks public housing options and that the logic of subsidies used to approach the problem goes hand in hand with the sacredness of uh, the private property. Today, we will explore the implication of the coronavirus crisis on our future and look a little bit into the perspectives trying to shape uh, a way ahead. When policy discourse frames disaster management and resilience as the most reasonable approach to deal with this crisis, advocating for sharing of distribution um, of responsibilities of responsiveness And even civil society movements have long time bet on capacity building, empowerment, resilience building of local communities. This crisis brings to surface that there, there are limits uh, to resilience. And it really puts into question a whole, a whole system that has very long time strangled our creative thoughts of other possibilities. We have um, to ask the very urgent questions. What is wrong with our system? And why have we been caught up in it? even though it has been failing us at multiple occasions and it has always been suffering um, and exploitation for the very large masses of society. Most importantly, what are the alternatives? In order for our species to be viable on the long term, 
A radical transformation of the world, which would be green and based on solidarity is necessary. What we need to ensure a long time sustainable and ecological mo model of use of natural resources. And we need to strengthen our public investment in welfare state and public health services. We could look at it like uh, a return to a global ba uh, partnership, a little bit based on an old communist structure that we will discuss uh, in more detail later today. So what we need is a society that puts the focus on universal and good quality access to health, education, public housing, and all other infra infrastructures, if we want to face the coming challenges and reduce their impacts. The linguist and political activist Noam Chomsky stated in an interview earlier this week, and I quote, the coronavirus is serious enough, but there is much greater horror approaching, and we are racing at the edge of a disaster, far worse of anything that happened in human history. He recognizes here two main threats, nuclear war and global warming. According to him, there will be a recovery from the coronavirus, but there won't be a recovery from those challenges we are facing. We have today no other choice but face the seriousness of the situation we are in and start strategically plan for what comes next. This will be the question that will keep us busy today and uh, that we will try to, to answer. How do we, find, do we fight for a society that is ready for what will come? So we will have three groups, um, I mean, we, three contributions that will try to kind of uh, respond to this question. We will start with Chris that uh, talks about opposes socialism to barbarism. We will have a second poll that is about anti-power or take the power, and then a third, um, which is about movementism uh, against the people. Donc, um, uh, nous allons avoir uh, trois contributions qui essaieront d'une certaine façon de répondre à, à, à la question de comment on se prépare pour uh, les challenges qui, qui s'approchent uh, et, et qui sont bien plus um, dévastateurs que le coronavirus. Donc, uh, uh, le, le danger du, de guerre nucléaire, bien sûr, mais aussi uh, le changement climatique, etc. Donc, on commencera par Christian qui va nous parler de l'opposition entre le socialisme et le barbarisme. Donc, je vais euh, juste vite fait euh, dire quelque chose parce que euh, on avait cru qu'on va voir euh, qui a répondu quoi pendant le, la, le poll, mais il, on ne voit pas ça. Donc, euh, je vais mettre un lien euh, sur un Google Doc où vous pouvez vous inscrire dans les, dans les différentes langues pour les groupes euh, pour, pour que je puisse mettre les groupes en place. So, uh, the whole thing with the poll uh, didn't work out as we planned. Uh, we thought that we would see who answered uh, which uh, language, but we don't see that. So, um, I'm going to put up uh, a link in the chat. It's already in the chat right now. Uh, where you can go into a Google Doc and there you can uh, sign up uh, for the language that you want to be in the group. Okay. <laughs> uh, there's just a question that is if uh, they can only listen without participating and that's obviously fine. Yeah. So Chris, go on. Okay, so um, I'm going to read something about uh, socialism, socialism versus barbarism. Um, well, uh, the current situation seems to be a, a coincidence of history, which seems to throw the current system into a deep crisis. Rights are being restricted, resources are lacking, and people are dying. It also shows that on one side, we are building a sense of community in solidarity, which may later perhaps lead to a better world. But above all, it shows that what previously seemed impossible is already taking place. The question that arises, and here I quote the Slovenian philosopher Slovak Zizek, communism or barbarism? We have the choice. We see how the world can show solidarity in the face of a great crisis and put all its strength into overcoming it. In Yemen, for example, the conflict is currently being paused in order to direct the forces to the fight against Corona. In many Western countries, there's a feeling of solidarity and community. 
professions that were considered unimportant before the crisis, such as salespersons, nurses, or educators, are now called system relevant uh, and are applauded. In other countries, such as the USA, the government has long failed to take measures to control the disease. In order to keep the economy alive, some American politici politicians are demanding that the lockdown is not feasible and that the elderly people should abstain from medical care. Here in Europe, we can say so we have some sense of collectivism, and in the United States of America, America we have some kind of capitalist dystopia. Of course, we must take care that solidarity does not turn into jingoism, or how some German call it, hurra patriotism. But solidarity has always been the best weapon of the working class against the bourgeoisie, and again, we have the choice. In addition to the social and political changes, we can also see a paradigm shift in the economy. In many European states, institutions that were privatized years ago under pressure from neoliberal regulations will be nationalized again. States are pouring out massive amounts of money as aid for companies, but also for private individuals, individuals undermining the neoliberal idea of market regulations. Even means of productions will be nationalized if necessary. In Spain and Italy, for example, parts of the hospitals and airline companies have been taken over by the state. Even in Germany, some voices are becoming louder, thinking about an increase in state influences, uh, influence on companies. Even in the USA, the stronghold of neoliberalism, Donald Trump is thinking about nationalizing parts of the economy. We are now seeing the collapse of the utopia of neoliberal conservatives like Francis Fukuyama. They prophesied in the 1990s that capitalism was the best possible form of human coexistence, and the state would withdraw from human life. They were even arrogant enough to foresee the end of history. They assumed that the world could unite under the, under the harmonious banner of capitalism. The current situation shows that history is back in full force and that we can expose the narrative for what it is. It's neoliberal bullshit. In 1990, all roads led to the consolidation of the hegemonic world order, uh, neoliberal world order. Perhaps today, all crises led, lead to the construction of a better world. Corona is the great, great evil, but also the great hope, which more or less unites the world community. We must continue to try to direct the momentum towards other challenges, such as the climate change. We have to realize that the new world leads either to a wonderful communist utopia or to a capitalist barbarism. It's now the time that we can build a more united community. It's now that we can seize the means of production, and it's now that we, get, that we can get a better life. We have the choice. And here I quote Zizek twice. It's easier to imagine the end of the world than imagining the end of capitalism. Well, with that said, see you either in hell or in communism. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. Um... So you'll have the opportunity to this, we, we can start discussing a little bit about your points. And for that, we will have two questions to help us. Um, the one is, um, are we running full speed ahead into a dystopia or into a better world? Um, donc, est-ce que nous avançons à toute vitesse vers une dystopie ou vers un monde meilleur? Et donc, j'invite uh, les participants uh, à se joindre au débat. Euh, pour, euh, juste pour encore une fois dire que pour, euh, pour se joindre au débat, ce serait bien de mettre un point euh, dans le chat. Comme ça, je peux mettre une liste euh, qui est un peu « balanced ». Donc, Mona qui veut parler. Mona, tu peux, um, voilà. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to ask how, how this is working. I, I think I'm not really getting it. <laughs> so I thought that if we want to join the group to talk, we should post it. For no. Now. So the first, uh, we will have three contributions that we will discuss at the same time with you. And later on, at the last part, we will have a big question where we will divide you into groups in order to discuss. Donc, uh, peut-être qu'il y a d'autres personnes qui avaient mal compris. On va 
euh, d'abord discuter les différents points, donc les trois points présentés, et c'est à la fin que nous ferons des petits groupes pour répondre à une plus grande question finale. Bon, elle rigole et elle a disparu. Donc, la question est, est-ce que nous avançons à toute vitesse vers une dystopie ou vers un monde meilleur? Sinon, il y a une deuxième question qui pourrait être intéressante et qui se base également sur ce que nous venons de discuter. C'est euh, quelles sont les mesures qui peuvent être utilisées dans le futur euh, ou dans d'autres crises, euh, euh, comme par exemple la crise climatique. Donc, which current measures could be used in the future to deal with other crises, such as the climate crisis. OK, donc Joël peut dire quelque chose. Joël? Oui. oui. I wanted to say something about the dystopia versus better world topic. I don't want to be the party pooper here or be uh, demotivating, but I think we will have a dystopia anyway, because we will have climate change, we will have uh, loss of biodiversity, uh, and all those other funny things we already talked about uh, last time. So we desperately need a better system to manage that world It's not going to be a, a utopia where there's uh, oat milk and uh, honey flowing, but it's going to be a dystopia that we need to manage as good as we can with scarce resources. And we desperately need a better system to manage those resources better than we are doing today. That's what I wanted to say. Ensuite, nous avons euh, Sophia qui voulait aussi dire quelque chose. Sophia, je te passe la parole. Oui, bonjour. Si je vais parler en français si c'est OK. Oui, bien sûr. Euh, euh, je, bon, je pense aussi un peu comme euh, Joël. Euh, J'aimerais bien euh, croire que donc, les, les euh, beaux exemples de solidarité qu'on voit quand même euh, par-ci, par-là, qui, qui vont se multiplier et qui vont, qui vont aussi s'institutionnaliser. Mais j'ai plutôt l'impression comme ça, de, quand, on, quand on voit ce qui se passe autour de nous, que les gens sont quand même plus intéressés à revenir à, au monde qu'on avait avant, où ils peuvent un peu faire ce qu'ils veulent, aller en vacances où ils veulent, acheter ce qu'ils veulent, quand ils veulent, sans trop se poser de questions. Et euh, que, en, en regardant comme ça sur Facebook et même ici, le nombre de, de personnes qui, qui se joignent à de, des, des initiatives comme celle-ci, bon, ici, il y en a 30, je trouve ça déjà pas mal, mais en général, les gens sont quand même très comment, euh, timides et ne, ne veulent même pas se mêler de ça un peu. Hein. Et donc, euh, je, oui, j'ai plutôt tendance aussi à penser que ça va être très difficile de changer euh, la, déjà la mentalité des gens et puis euh, avec ça, bien sûr, les, les, les politiques qui, qui pourraient euh, en découler. Et en, la deuxième question, c'était comment on peut, euh, 
C'était quoi déjà exactement la deuxième question Comment on peut. Qu C'était on... comment les mesures qui, qui sont utilisées en ce moment pour la crise du corona pourraient être éventuellement utilisées pour d'autres crises comme la, la crise climatique Moi, je, en fait, je ne vois que euh, comme seule manière vraiment de, de, de faire euh, comment, euh, une relation de force c est, c est, ou, ou une grève euh, générale ou vraiment des, des manifestations en masse mais euh, pas comme celle qu'il y a eu jusqu'à maintenant pour le climat c'était bon, c'est pas suffisant quoi. donc euh, je, je, je ne vois que vraiment euh, la, la possibilité que les gens se, 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 se regroupent en masse entre eux pour faire euh, voilà, pour montrer, pour revendiquer ce que vraiment euh, euh, il faut, il faut qu'on fasse c'est de euh, s'occuper plus des gens et de la planète et pas euh, de, du capital et de, des entreprises. Donc, euh, voilà. C'est mon grade. Euh, Laure, tu veux dire quelque chose Oui, oui. 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 Bonjour, bonjour tout le monde. Euh, moi, je voulais ajouter un point. C'est euh, donc, oui, aujourd'hui, il y a des mesures euh, très. Euh, euh, tous les gouvernements, en fait, ont pris des mesures assez. Euh, impressionnante pour faire face à cette crise du Covid. Et donc, on peut se poser la question si on ne peut pas avoir, faire, avoir recours à des mesures un peu similaires pour faire face au changement climatique. Mais en même temps, je pense qu'il ne faut pas oublier que la plupart des pays, en tout cas, sont dans des, ont adopté des, des, des lois d'état de, d'urgence, ont déclaré des états d'urgence qui leur permettent finalement de... Euh, prendre des mesures très restrictives pour les libertés, euh, libertés fondamentales. Et donc, euh, oui, je vais juste, il faut juste garder ça, ce point en tête que, oui, il y a des mesures, évidemment, pour faire face à des crises, mais il faut que ça reste euh, exceptionnel. Il ne faut pas que des, des, des états d'urgence euh, restent en place pour des, des durées euh, illimitées. Oui. Donc, uh, I'm, I'm just going to translate the, Laure's idea very quickly, which saying that uh, most of the countries have managed to react that quickly and uh, implement such measures because they have an emergency state and that the emergency state at the same time takes away a lot of liberties and um, that we have to, uh, or we should try to get out of this emergency state as uh, quick as possible in order not to lose our um, freedom and liberty. So that's an, another point that is quite interesting because in fact, in the climate crisis, there is no emergency state that has been declared. And I, I can't really imagine an emergency state like that being declared for a very long period of time. So that, that's a good point. Um, je propose um, à Mona qui veut dire quelque chose et ensuite on continue au, au prochain point, Mona. Uh, I just wanted to say also that like the, the measures that that for me are like new now is for for example this kind of yeah you could compare it to the universal basic income um i i know now the situation that in austria people are um very quickly getting getting money uh, for example artists and stuff so i think that is also something that we we can now try out a bit or at least more people are getting the feeling what it could be like, like a, a, a UBI. And um, yeah, but also on the other hand, I think we are not really pre prepared for it. And uh, already I think there's like, um, yeah, like the money is, is missing um, for, for like the, the budget is not there. So, but I think it's those two, two sides and um, that a lot of people are for the first time experiencing a different um, kind of money distribution, you could say. Yeah. Um, nous avons encore deux questions. Si vous promettez d'être très court, je vous laisse parler parce que sinon on est hors de temps. <laughs> Donc uh, Christian qui commence et ensuite il y a Raquel. Voilà. Uh, I just want to add something to the first uh, statements. Um, yes, we know that a lot of people want to go back to the status quo before the crisis, but we know also that the, um, the hit on the economy is so heavy, so hard, that it will, there is no turning back to the point before the crisis. 
And I also, I also think that um, this, I won't turn on my video, I just talk now, uh, that, uh, yeah, that we have to think about that uh, there will be a, a change, uh, either to the good or to the evil, but there will be something uh, changing, and maybe it's also changing uh, the way we see the, the um, economy. Yeah, thank you. Raquel, I'll let you just uh, quickly reply to that or add a comment. Okay, thank you. I just wanted to add that I think that we are in a very dangerous place because organized civil society doesn't have the tools they used to have. We cannot go to the streets. We cannot protest. And this is a very difficult situation if we want to be included in the measures that are being taken. And on the other hand, when you hear the type of policies and measures that people are, are trying to take. Um, for example, Bill Gates and other governments, it's really scary. I think we are in a very dangerous place. Thanks. Je propose donc qu'on continue avec uh, la prochaine contribution qui sera de David et qui nous parlera un peu, uh, qui opposera un peu l'anti-pouvoir à uh, la stratégie de reprendre le pouvoir. Donc David is the next speaker and he's going to um, oppose a little bit two strategies or two, two postures which are uh, anti-power um, or take the power back. So David, you have, the stage is yours. Alors, je vais parler en français. Um, donc, um, ceux qui ont déjà suivi l'une ou l'autre de mes interventions reconnaîtront ce début parce que c'est toujours un peu le même début. Donc, je dis toujours euh, euh, que le début, c'est une défaite. Donc, au début, il y a une défaite. Et euh, je pense que c'est en quelque sorte le point de départ de toute politique de gauche progressive euh, euh, qui, qui, qui se fait actuellement. Donc, euh, ce point de départ, c'est l'effondrement de l'Union soviétique, du socialisme réellement existant. Euh, si seulement une partie de la gauche euh, continuait encore à la fin à cultiver des liens avec ce socialisme réellement existant, ça restait quand même euh, des points de référence pour toute la gauche, d'une façon ou d'une autre, de façon négative euh, ou de façon positive, mais ça restait un, un point de référence. Euh, cette défaite historique qui est venue conclure donc, un cycle historique qui pour certains a été ouvert avec la révolution russe de 1917, ce qui, est, ce qui, est, ce qui paraît logique, mais qui pour d'autres euh, a été ouvert avec la révolution française de 1789. Euh, 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 donc... Euh, voilà, ça, ça vient conclure ce cycle historique. Cette défaite est donc allée de pair, surtout dans, dans nos pays, avec donc ce qu'on a dit l'autre fois euh, dans, le, dans la première partie, cette marche triomphale du, du capitalisme néolibéral euh, qui, euh, qui, 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 a, qui, euh, qui a une large emprise sur les politiques occidentales, sur les économies, etc. Indépendamment comment euh, on se positionne concrètement par rapport au socialisme réellement existant, l'absence de modèles concurrents ce qui était donc le bloc de l'Est, l'absence de modèles concurrents au capitalisme occidental a promu l'idée d'une fin de l'histoire. Donc Christian en a parlé avant, cette idée qui a été théorisée par l'historien Francis Fukuyama et qui a très largement contribué à légitimer et accélérer aussi les, les attaques du capital contre l'État-providence qui, en quelque sorte, avait aussi été construit face à cette menace rouge et afin de calmer les ardeurs de, de, de la classe ouvrière. Évidemment, après une telle défaite historique, la gauche a mis du temps à se retrouver dans les nouvelles circonstances. Et les conséquences de la défaite ont été accompagnées d'une remise en cause des concepts et théories qui avaient servi de base euh, au modèle soviétique et à toute la gauche de, 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 de l'après-guerre, en quelque sorte. Donc, une partie importante de la gauche, euh, surtout donc la social-démocratie, euh, a fait le choix d'un arrangement avec le nouvel ordre dominant à travers des third way politics, euh, euh, comme prôné donc par un Tony Blair ou un Gerhard Schröder, qui marque la néolibéralisation de, 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 de large pan de la social-démocratie euh, euh, occidentale et qui sent une face de l'arrangement avec l'ordre établi. Parce que, euh, pour moi, dans le sillon de cette défaite historique, donc de 1989 et des années suivantes, la gauche radicale a élaboré elle aussi des théories qui lui permettent un arrangement avec cet ordre établi. Euh, J'explique, donc pour moi, le concept même, euh, donc, dans le sillon de cette défaite historique, le concept même de prise de pouvoir, qui est pourtant essentiel dans une conception léniniste, mais aussi 
marxiste de la politique, a été remis en cause, voire totalement abandonné. Des théories autour de changer le monde sans prendre le pouvoir et du retrait en vue le jour, théorisé par John Holloway, mais aussi par des théoriciens comme Negri et Hart, et traduit en pratique par, entre autres, le mouvement sapatiste et une partie des mouvements altermondialistes ou antimondialistes. Mais la crise de 2007-2008, et bien plus peut-être encore la crise actuelle, et d'autres crises, remettent à leur tour en question ces théories. La question qui se pose, donc, euh, euh, à mes yeux, c'est est-ce qu'on peut éternellement esquiver la question de la prise du pouvoir Le capitalisme finira-t-il par s'autodétruire comme certains euh, continuent de l'espérer Et peut-être encore plus pertinent, tous ces mouvements en dehors du pouvoir, est-ce qu'ils peuvent réellement exister sans un État, sans ce pouvoir qui existe euh, pour, pour revenir un peu aussi à ce qui a été dit avant, donc la, crise, la crise climatique, la dystopie qui nous attend, est-ce qu'elle nous permet le luxe, parce que j'estime je, que c'est un luxe, euh, d'un de, 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 changement du monde sans prise de pouvoir et est-ce qu'elle ne remet pas plutôt au centre euh, de la question politique, donc cette question du pouvoir non, euh, on, on peut parler encore plus de la crise du Covid-19, donc qui montre à quel point les politiques néolibérales peuvent coûter des vies hein euh, est-ce que cette crise nous permet-elle d'esquiver la question du contrôle des infrastructures, la question de la souveraineté sanitaire, alimentaire et autres, comme euh, la crise du logement au Luxembourg en particulier Toutes ces crises, elles remettent au centre de l'attention la question du pouvoir. Parce que pour implémenter des politiques socialement justes, écologiquement durables, des politiques de logement viables, des politiques euh, qui vont dans le sens de l'égalité des genres, qui vont dans le sens de construire ou de reconstruire une couverture médicale universelle des infrastructures et des services publics performants, garantir un certain niveau de vie pour toutes et pour tous, tout cela implique évidemment de se poser la question du pouvoir. Et quand je parle de la question du pouvoir, je ne parle pas uniquement du pouvoir gouvernemental ou du pouvoir étatique, mais je parle, pour utiliser des termes gramsciens, donc on a parlé de Gramsci déjà la dernière fois, je parle aussi de la société civile, de notions comme hégémonie culturelle ou de common sense, sens commun. Et je parle aussi, et ça sera le sujet du troisième bloc, de la construction d'un acteur politique capable de prendre ce pouvoir. Donc, je parle de tout ça. Je suis intuitivement convaincu, et je vais finir sur ça, que face à l'urgence de la situation, nous ne pouvons plus nous permettre le luxe d'esquiver en bonne nouvelle gauche la question du pouvoir, et nous ne pouvons pas nous permettre de rester marginaux. Confrontés donc au choix entre socialisme et barbarie, dont nous avons parlé juste avant, évidemment que nous devons parler de, 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 de questions de pouvoir et de stratégies qui nous permettent une prise de pouvoir. Merci David. Euh, donc, euh, nous allons ouvrir de nouveau euh, pour le débat. Donc, si quelqu'un veut dire quelque chose, nous avons également euh, euh, des questions. Donc, la crise du Covid-19, la crise climatique, la crise du logement nous permettent-elle le luxe d'un changement de monde sans prise de pouvoir euh, ne remet-elle pas plutôt au centre la question du pouvoir euh, Do the COVID-19 crisis, the climate crisis, the housing crisis allow us the luxury of changing the world without taking the power um, Don't they rather put the question of power back at the center Il y a Maurice qui veut dire quelque chose. Maurice. Hi everybody, can you hear me? Oui. Pas très, pas très bien, maybe the sound is better now. Yes. Okay. So I, I would like to uh, react to uh, what David has said. So it's um, quite clear that since uh, 1989, and there's been plenty of uh, scientific research on that, that uh, the left has been uh, has since it had its failure in 1989 it has been discarded as a solution or as an ideology that is not really a, a solution <clears throat> the problem nowadays is that um, most people cannot clearly make a distinction bec between uh, economic considerations and political uh, considerations of a system because they are so closely intertwined but it's very important to be able to make this, uh, that distinction also uh, added to that um, is that socialism or what people um, what people have in their head as a, as their idea of socialist systems purely socialist systems did not have 
a real successful project uh, throughout the world in the past uh, 20 to 30 years. Uh, but nevertheless, uh, we have a lot of uh, young people that are more driven by female values. Uh, we had a couple of shocks. We've had systems that don't uh, that only work for the few and do no longer work for the many. So this shock of 1989, I think, is slowly starting to being digested and the uh, left uh, is uh, gaining cruising speed. So uh, that being said, uh, I would also like to add that uh, if we are able to make a distinction between, between uh, economical and uh, political uh, aspects uh, of our systems, it's, to me it's quite clear that capitalism or what we understand as an, econom uh, an economy that uh, is based on, on, on more or less free market, clearly uh, based on, on, on also on, on, on given rules uh, like contract law and so on and so forth, uh, that there are different kinds of goods in, a, in, in, in an economy, uh, namely private public uh, commons and, and club goods uh, that can be managed in um, in different kind of ways and for which also private, uh, uh, especially private goods uh, have been uh, have been set to work best on the, on the free market uh, consideration. However, that's only the economical part of it. Uh, when it comes to uh, the political uh, part of, uh, of our systems, it is, uh, it, is, it, is, it is very clear uh, as it has been through all those uh, those uh, socialist projects uh, that have been attempted throughout the world and that have failed uh, as it is now in in, in uh, most uh, capitalist systems that system as i said before no longer work for the many but only work for the few that there is a problem with uh, the, the checks and balances in place so basically the problem for both both types of system have been have been the same and in the end, if we can manage to, 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 to establish uh, checks and balances that work for the great majority or for all uh, the people on the political level, we then are also able to set up uh, a level playing field on the, on the economical uh, or in the economical arena, uh, which will then also uh, guarantee us uh, well, which which will lead to inclusion on 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 both uh, both parts of the spectrum, namely the political and the economic. Thank you, Maurice. Um, I will uh, let David Wagner speak. Oui, merci. Oui. Um... Oui, en effet, c'est vrai, euh, l'écroulement de l'Union soviétique, évidemment, euh, a déboussolé beaucoup de monde et toute la gauche radicale, y compris celle qui n'était euh, pas en faveur euh, de l'Union soviétique, euh, ils ont été en quelque sorte des dommages collatéraux. Et, et si l'on peut comparer euh, la conscience politique, je pense, aujourd'hui, en 2020, par rapport à, que sais-je, 94, 95, pour ceux qui s'en souviennent, je crois que quand même, euh, comme Maurice l'a dit plus tôt, euh, eh bien, cette victoire néolibérale aussi, qui a suivi l'écroulement, euh, a été digérée, je pense, en tout cas dans, dans la conscience de beaucoup de, de beaucoup de gens, parce que tout simplement, le capital a pu montrer ce dont il était, ce dont il était capable et pas capable aussi. Hein. D'ailleurs, on peut le voir par rapport à ce qui se passe aux États-Unis. Euh, oui, ensuite, il y a eu ces questions qui étaient très en vogue de Negri, de Hart, euh, qui étaient euh, séduisantes, mais qui ont fait d'une certaine manière du surplace. Mais euh, ce que je pense que nous sommes quand même dans une période très intéressante, très angoissante évidemment aussi, mais très intéressante car euh, on en revient à cette question que, dont Marx parlait de manière peut-être prématurée en visionnaire un petit peu au 19e siècle, c'est celle de l'internationalisme, celle d'un capitalisme qui se mondialise complètement et avec lui des moyens de communication qui sont phénoménaux, c'est-à-dire de nos jours, nous, sommes, nous appartenons à une génération qui peut savoir, à Lima, on peut savoir ce qui se passe à Delhi ou à Paris ou à Berlin de manière assez rapide. Et donc là, je pense que c'est cette question-là aussi qui va être cruciale car d'autant plus à cause de ce virus qui est inégalement réparti, qui fait beaucoup plus de ravages pour l'instant, évidemment, dans les pays plus industrialisés. 
Mais quand même, euh, cette crise provoque une nouvelle prise de conscience euh, universelle. Hein. Et je pense que c'est là que euh, ça va se jouer. Alors, l'internationalisme, ce n'est pas partout, tout se passe en même temps, mais il y aura des endroits probablement sur la planète, en Europe, ou ailleurs, euh, où euh, je pense que prochainement, il y aura des formes d'insurrection. Lesquelles, je ne sais pas. Est-ce qu'il euh, y aura des avant-gardes, peut-être Ce n'est pas forcément un parti, une avant-garde. Hein. Je pense que le léninisme était intéressant, mais euh, c'est vieux d'un siècle. Donc, euh, je pense qu'à euh, partir de là, à partir de ces étincelles, quelque chose pourra s'organiser, mais je pense que l'organisation internationaliste sera cruciale. Merci. Ben, je propose, s'il n'y a plus de contribution euh, pour, pour ce bloc, on continue avec Swain. Oui. Donc, Swain va un peu nous parler euh, d'isolement politique en, en, en contradiction avec euh, la création du peuple, le peuple. Donc, euh... Juste avant que tu commences, Sven, ce euh, serait bien que tout le monde qui n'a pas encore, euh, c'est pas encore inscrit dans les groupes, euh, que vous le fassiez maintenant. Je vais encore une fois mettre le lien dans le chat. Euh, mais il y a encore des gens qui, qui n'ont pas, qui sont pas inscrits dans les groupes, donc ce euh, serait bien de le faire maintenant. Okay, so, um, je demanderai Joël juste pour mettre le PowerPoint qui correspond au bloc. <laughs> Joël n'est peut-être plus là. Ok. C'est pas grave, tu peux, tu peux peut-être commencer, Swen. Okay, I'll just start without uh, without the proper slide, but that doesn't matter too much. Um, so, uh, well, I would guess that um, that many of you have, uh, at some point of their lives, uh, been politically involved in some cause or another, and many of you probably still are. Um, Some might be active in the environmentalist movement, some organize in the women's rights movement, some do anti-racist work, uh, some are active in uh, the labor movement. And um, well, while those struggles certainly intersect, uh, many are still wary of unifying those causes and prefer sticking to their political niches. At the same time, uh, we all want to mobilize large numbers in order to make ourselves heard and implement change on the issues we care deeply about. So the question we have to ask ourselves is, uh, is it possible to unify social struggles? And if so, how can it be done? Um, so I kind of, uh, Well, you've, some of you have read her text, but uh, Chantal Mouffe uh, is a, Belg a Belgian uh, political theorist uh, who tries to answer those questions in her book uh, for a left populism. Um, the social question, economic and social justice, uh, has a special importance for all left-wing movements. Um, and labor rights make up a significant part of left-wing political activism. Um, however, as we look at other political topics, uh, we realize that the left wing also can't run on labor rights alone. Uh, how would one imagine, for instance, a left that emphasizes labor rights, but does not want to talk about environmental justice or about women's rights? Uh, environmental justice, for instance, is unimaginable in a free market uh, without regulation where corporations get to pollute as they please. Uh, the same goes for equal, equal pay for women, which has to be enforced against the will of the free market, who, pre who prefers to keep uh, labor cheap and uses every excuse, every excuse to do so. Um, So this is why it is a uh, left populist 
movement uh, goal to unify those struggles uh, through the formation of a common identity and through interlinking all kinds of democratic struggles. Um, liberalism has always, uh, not just the neoliberal form, but always uh, reduced citizenship to a legal status at, on an uh, individual level. You pay taxes, you vote every now and then, and you most certainly aren't part of a larger collective. Uh, some of you might recall the phrase, there is no such thing as society that uh, Margaret Thatcher uttered. This is just, just an example of, of this. Uh, so there is no we, only the autonomous I who takes responsibility, etc. Uh, the radical democratic uh, discourse that Chantal Mouffe mentions, however, sees uh, citizenship as a broader concept. It means being part of a collective and participating actively in the community, not only by voting, but uh, by being politically active in one way or another. So, uh, well, as I mentioned, uh, to unify uh, the different struggles, um, we need a united identity, something that is beyond pure rationality. Um, MUF calls in this context for the creation of a people. She does not distinguish this people by ethnicity or nationality or language. Um, she rather defines it uh, broadly as uh, something that is constantly being created through a changing community of different struggles for justice. So combining immigrants' rights, labor struggles, environmentalism, women's rights, uh, and they all would be united under the banner of, of a democratic struggle for participation in the community. This should be the goal of a left, of a left populist platform. So how can we apply this to Luxembourg? How can we crea uh, create a people as a unity in democratic struggle? Uh, we have a very particular situation here. Um, a large portion of the population does not have citizenship in the strict legal sense, and therefore does not have the right to vote. At the same time, they make up huge parts of low wage and precarious jobs, of manual labor, of tenants, etc. Uh, the other part of the population, the, the Luxembourgish nationals, uh, mostly works uh, higher paying jobs, but they're still wage laborers. So the, the, the situation is not fundamentally different. Still, the majority of nationals, um, well, the, the, the majority of nationals aren't part of any other social class than, uh, than those who do not have citizenship. Um, however, one gets the feeling that they often do not self-identify uh, with the working class. Um, the democratic deficit, uh, however, does not, does not end there. Uh, as laws are written by the, by the so-called big four uh, more and more frequently, as the government relies more and more on private contractors for counsel, as public services are sold out to market forces and a huge financial and real estate lobby exerts its influence on policies, we lose our grip on the democratic process. In order to unify members of those two major population groups, citizens and non-citizens in the legal sense, though not in the sense that Muff would understand it, uh, we can solely rely on elections. We will have to form a new identity based on our common democratic struggles. And in, 
In this context, um, we'll have to ask ourselves, how can this be done in Luxembourg? Okay, I'm sorry, I was not managing to unmute myself. <laughs> really know why. Um, so, uh, just pour, pour poser la question en français, la question est comment construire un peuple dans le contexte luxembourgeois, bien sûr, en, en gardant en tête um, toutes les difficultés uh, évoquées par Swain. Um, so, how to construct a people in the Luxembourgish context. This is uh, the larger question that we will um, discuss within the different groups, uh, because it's, it's a large question that um, takes a lot of different perspectives and a lot of different point of views to discuss. So we thought it's something um, that we could do in groups with you together. Milena, do you want to say something on the groups? Yeah, so uh, most of you uh, signed up for one of the, the groups, but um, there's some people that I just put now in groups. Hopefully um, the, it will be a language that you understand. Um, for example, Geoffrey or there were people that I didn't know where to put them. Geoffrey, you put in French. Okay, okay, I put him in Luxembourg. So I'm going to put him in French. Um, okay, then um, I think it will be good uh, only in the English group where I'm in too. Um, there's a couple of people that don't want to talk. So probably it's going to be a bigger group, but less people talking. For the rest, I think it's uh, good. Okay. Um, Donc, uh, Milena est en train d'expliquer qu'elle uh, qu a départagé les gens tous dans un groupe, par exemple, un bonjour, un français, un anglais. Et elle va donc maintenant créer des groupes où nous aurons 25 minutes pour essayer de répondre à la question de, de la construction d'un peuple uh, dans le contexte luxembourgeois pour ensuite revenir pour conclure dans notre groupe. Uh, okay, I'm going to open the rooms now and then um, and then those who don't want to talk, uh, you can just like stay muted and don't um, put your camera on, um, but you can still listen to what the others are talking about. Hi. Um, so, okay, maybe everybody that wants to talk can put on their camera. I'm not sure um, if you feel comfortable with that. Um, but then we kind of know who is in the discussion because uh, this group was a group where um, some people signed up, but only to listen and not to uh, actively uh, participate. Okay, so I think we have five people. That's already good. <laughs> oh, six. Nice. Hey, Rakai. <laughs> um, yeah, so the question, um, maybe Sven, as you did the input, maybe you want to give another like round of uh, how what is the question of the um, the group and then we can discuss it a bit and the idea is that um, after uh, 20 minutes or so we kind of do a wrap-up we kind of decide on what uh, was our 
main discussion and then someone uh, of our group uh, we will decide who um, you can decide it later uh, will report into the big group uh, after the discussion and then um, we can hear also about the other groups what they were discussing yeah so well if if we would if we were to maybe formulate the uh, the question a bit more precisely it would be um how how would we uh, construct a people in in Luxembourg in the Mufian sense, meaning not on grounds of nationalism or ethnicity or whatever, but on the grounds of um, of shared democratic struggles, meaning struggles for social, economic, environmental, etc., justice and 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 for uh, more freedom, more equality. Um, yeah. Also considering all the difficulties that we have, uh, especially in, in our country. I think we can just try and if somebody wants to say something, just try to talk and then we can see if there's problems with talk, uh, people talking over each other, then we can try another method. But I think with six people, I think we can manage. <laughs> Okay. Um, as, a, as a social worker, um, I think that in Luxembourg we live in, uh, I, I saw that for years, okay, I, I, I saw it perhaps from, from the other side when I, when I was working because I am really um, uh, very into it when I am with my people. <laughs> Um, so uh, it's a very uh, unjust society, Luxembourg. Um, and um, one of the problems also now is there is a lack of the vote, the right, the right of to, to vote for a lot of people. And I think that is also a problem for for us, for the left, because. Um, uh, there are a lot of uh, people who uh, we um, are trying to the, the housing problems, the the, the wages, which are not high enough to really uh, live without uh, um, difficulties in Luxembourg. Um, all these people uh, have, don't have the right to vote, or often don't have the right to vote because they are, have not the, the, the Luxembourgish nationality, or even if they have another European nationality, which uh, they, they don't do all this paperwork to to go and um, I don't know how to call that to be to do the inscription to the uh, to, to, to to be able to vote. Um, and I think that the the people who who govern us they don't realize what uh, what 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 the, the other people live on the on the other side of the, uh, the they are not interested. Perhaps if they have a, a person who is cleaning their house, then sometimes they are able to focus on. Uh, on that person, and so I think that we have to try to to um, improve the the dialogue a bit like uh, I thought a bit like uh, Mary Lou uh, Macdonald did her um, her campaign in Ireland um, this term, and she they. No, not only she, but Sinn Féin went, goes out to the people and um, asks them to explain what is happening in their daily lives, what is difficult in, in their lives. Um, and then um, these testimonies, uh, through these testimonies, they have been gathered and they saw that they are not alone with their problems. And so Sinn Féin really went up this term very much, and also uh, the grassroots movement around uh, Bernie Sanders, even if he has uh, stopped uh, his um, candidature now, 
but I think that he has built up um, really uh, a lot uh, where other uh, politicians like AOC, for example, can continue to, to, to work. Okay, that's what I wanted to say. Thank you. Can I maybe react to that? Yeah. <clears throat> so especially to what has been said to uh, Senator Sanders uh, as a closing statement uh, just before. Uh, I think you're absolutely right with your view, uh, and uh, which is also the view uh, that uh, Chomsky uh, shared, that basically um, what Sanders accomplished throughout uh, 2016 and now 2020 is uh, quite impressive because uh, he has basically shifted, completely shifted the, uh, the political arena, topics that have not even been discussed before where we are back on the topic of the failure of, uh, of the left in 1989. All those taboos uh, in, have now been broken in America. He may, uh, he, he may have failed as a, as a presidential client in 20, uh, candidate in 2020, but he has still moved the, the political arena so much more uh, than anybody else before him. But what I wanted to say, actually, uh, with regards to the, to, the, to the Luxembourgish model is, and this probably applies also to a lot of other models uh, throughout, uh, throughout the world, is that we are fed, probably, we are still fed a lot of bullshit in our day. Uh, what I mean by that uh, is uh, maybe maybe the best way to explain this is by uh, giving a uh, quite uh, quite uh, concrete example. Uh, I have studied uh, economics, and uh, one of the first classes when they teach you economics, they tell you that the greatest achievement of economics is uh, that at some point uh, humankind was able to specialize, and they always put that specialization in the foreground. And this specialization basically focuses on what one person can do. So you can specialize. You can, as a person, as an individual, you become uh, the best at one very specific thing. But what they fail to acknowledge, or the, the, this point actually is, is, is not really made throughout any of those, those uh, educational books, is that actually what specialization enables uh, or it's, it's one of the cornerstone of, of cooperation in or throughout the humankind. So basically the whole value that is created in an economical system does not, uh, is not grounded in specialization alone, but most importantly, it is grounded in cooperation of a lot of people that are specialized. So this, uh, in my opinion, this explains quite clearly that uh, the the we is so much more important than the I, because even when you have a couple of people that are not that specialized and they cooperate together, they create so much more value than one singular person, even if they are perfect in what they do and create on their own. So where do I want to get with this? It's basically that we are fed a lot of bullshit in so many different areas, and we just, uh, just discover that it is bullshit when we are confronted with a situation in our life that is difficult, whether this situation arises uh, through a corona crisis, uh, through a financial and, uh, and uh, national debt crisis in 2008, or, or the com crisis in 2000, or even oil crises uh, some decades earlier. <clears throat> so what is clearly lacking, in my opinion, is any kind of civic education. in the Luxembourgish who are not exposed to any political or economical theories whatsoever. Even on the university level, what they teach you is purely neoliberal theories, and that, that's about it. So um, I've been fortunate enough to, to have a couple of, uh, of, of professors or at my university who push uh, those alternative views uh, a bit further, so I also uh, wrote uh, wrote a couple of pieces on that, and 
it's it's just shocking to me that now with with all I know now just which has arisen uh, for me personally um, just out of personal interest in those different things and maybe maybe if you are kind of an empathetic person uh, you, you even if yourself you're doing quite well and you see other people are doing not so well and you you see the injustice in that that it's purely um, upon your own shoulders to find out what is actually happening and what is what is so shocking to me is that basically as uh, David Wagner said this before in the in the bigger discussion is that most of the theory most of those alternative theories and uh, especially leftist theories those are not very new so this is quite quite old stuff the left just had the 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 the, 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 the unfortunate that it was uh, abused by uh, authoritarian uh, regimes and was implemented in a very bad fashion so that that is why it is now nowadays or was for the past decades completely disregarded as a possible solution for any any socioeconomic system but uh, it's 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 it, in my opinion it's a big shame that uh, we uh, in, in very young ages we don't um, educate people more on where does uh, does does our political uh, our political system come from? What were the different influences, and what are other influences in in in, in the world or have been throughout history? Uh, and the same on 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 other arenas as well. If this is the economical arena or the ecological arena, and so forth. Thank you. I just wanted to say I completely agree with this. I think this economic idea that we are all individualistic, we only care for ourselves, we are rational, we are egoistic, it's like a self-fulfilling -fulfill prophecy where politicians and economists are making models based on that, on people acting that way. So we are promoting this really toxic behavior and actually people do cooperate, they do make communities and we see it right now in this pandemic how a large uh, part of the population, th they do things for nothing because they feel personally concerned to help. And I think on the other hand, with regards to Luxembourg, I'm not Luxembourgish. And um, I think it's a very difficult situation, of course. But on the other hand, I do see this way towards building the people in, for example, in the United for Climate Justice. You had NGOs, you have the youth, which is a great power here in Luxembourg. I think this is the change that can really move things around because they have another mentality. They grew up with other views. They are not so close like the older, a large part of the older generation. You also had their, even the church was participating, which was pricing and unions. I think that was an amazing work. And I think it, it has to go in that in that direction of sitting together and trying to build something. And also, I think that this model that the government has chosen, it's collapsing already. All these uh, malls that were created, for what future and for what consumers? I mean, the model is already unsustainable. Poverty is rising, criminality is rising. Even Luxembourgish people cannot live in Luxembourg anymore. It's, I think it's going to, turn against itself. And I think what we need to see, or the Luxembourgish people need to see, is that the promise that they have from this model, it's not going to happen. You know, it's not working anymore. And they also need to take care, for example, for food security, which Luxembourg doesn't have. And right now with this pandemic, for example, if the borders close, there's no health system here because 60% of the people are not living in Luxembourg, which is completely crazy. And there you see the dependence that we have and how we actually need to care for each other and care for everyone in society. Thanks. Well, I think, I think you made one great point there, um, which is with the, uh, with the climate protests, um, where you can actually see like beginnings of like this uh, unity and struggle. 
when when unions who traditionally don't participate in environmentalism, at least not directly, um, when they join those protests, uh, that's a good sign. It, it, it's, it's a sign that it could be possible. Um, however, that's it's it's only like a first baby step um, because it it needs to become even broader. It needs to be, um, and, and I mean, there's there's lots of examples of of uh, these baby steps uh, forming. We had it in the uh, I think it was uh, the 80s or 70s when during coal strikes in in Great Britain there was actually a an LGBT content uh, contingent uh, showing up like uh, you know lesbian and gay and uh, uh, people uh, for uh, uh, for the minors um, and they were uh, called lesbian and gays for the minors yeah exactly and and money for... and, and and I think. Uh, as, as far as I read about it, uh, this even formed lasting bonds between those two groups. So, like, struggling together is not only, it's not just important in a way that, that we combine forces, but also because it creates solidarity between groups who otherwise rarely interact. Um, like, if if we see each other at in like during the same struggle and we see eye to eye, we can see the one next to me is struggling for the same causes. They all just want justice. They all just want to uh, live in live in a society where they can live well. And so we, we kind of, uh, it's kind of a political bonding, if you will. Um, and we can use that and, and we can use that to, to do, to take this a step further and to create an actual platform uh, for this. Do you want to go first, Rakado? Should I go? Um, yeah, um, reacting to kind of a different things that have been said. Um, uh, I've seen in the last uh, years, like one, two years, um, well, I've been back in Luxembourg for three years now, and um, since that, I've I've seen that uh, there's more and more uh, people or like movements that kind of interact with each other. And I uh, have really gone into some of those movements with the goal of um, get, getting them to work together, etc. So one part it was the United for Climate Justice movement. Uh, like the, I specifically went into Youth for Climate. Um, with the goal of, uh, of course, helping them build a strong movement as the youth um, for the climate, etc. But also, um, then later on, I, I realized that it's extremely important that the unions and the youth uh, get together. And of course, a lot of other organizations too. But I think those two um, are like key factors in, this, uh, in that um, um, group. And then there's also the, the women's uh, movement. Um, where I have been active uh, in the last uh, years. And I think now for the women's strike, it was the first time that we uh, kind of gotten out of the feminist bubble in Luxembourg and that we kind of gotten outside um, of this, yeah, even like politicized bubble. Um, and that we, um, and I think that was also one of the, uh, the reasons for that was also that we uh, specifically work together with the unions and uh, another group that we worked together was um, uh, the black uh, feminists. So I think um, those those two together with like the old school feminists and the younger feminists together they created also a movement um, um, that that goes beyond the the normal borders of like political movements. And I think um, something that I have learned um, also from this um, uh, the lesbians and gays for the minors because I. I always uh, think of it as an example of something that I want to do with my activism, uh, is that the lesbians and the gays, they didn't um, go to the minors and were, were like, we need your help um, to um, with something from their struggle. But they specifically went to the minors and were like, we want to help you. And then they um, raised a lot of money for the, for the minors. 
uh, they, that they uh, that were on strike. And um, actually, what's extremely um, nice to see is that later on, I think like a year after or two years after, there was a bill that had uh, to be passed in the, um, I don't know how the English or UK works. In the what? House of Commons? House of Commons. Yeah, there was like a bill uh, about gay rights. And um, at that point, the miners, they all mobilized their contacts that they have had uh, through the unions etc to help pass that bill so the lesbian and gays didn't go into the struggle with the miners with the prospect of getting help from them but in the end that's how you create a, um, a union with some other organizations is that you go in there and you help them with what they need and you don't do it out of self of selfish reasons of like I need them in my movement so I'm just gonna go and ask them to be part of my movement but you go into their movement and you're like I'm here what re resources do you need how can I help and then afterwards they will know that you were there to support them and they will give the support back and I think that's one um, method that we need to um, work on more um, instead of going around and asking hey can you help me with this blah 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 is more than I'm going to go and give my help to other people. And then I see that uh, the, the movements will grow together and they will, um, um, for example, the, the Youth for Climate, uh, they had the unions uh, mobilized with them uh, in September for the climate. And now uh, in December, when um, the, the, there was in Cactus, there was the, the strikes, or not the strike, but the uh, Piqué, the protest okay. in front of Cactus. Um, the Youth for Climate, they also came. They weren't thousands, but the key organizers, they still came and they supported the union as well in their struggle. And I think that's um, what, what needs to be done methodologically. And I think um, what, coming back to also what Natalie said um, about the, the voting right, I think it's, that's like one of the biggest um, democratic deficits that we have. And, um, yeah, the whole referendum was a disaster and uh, the outcome and also as well as the, the whole campaign, there was a disaster as well. And so I think we come, we need to, uh, it's how many years now that the referendum, it was in 2000? Five years. Five years? Five years, yeah. yeah. So I think five years after that, we need to kind of be, get over it and <laughs> see, okay, this was a disaster campaign-wise and outcome-wise. And so now, how can we uh, go about that subject in a different way? And um, I think that's, that's something that needs to be done. But, um... Yeah, I actually, although I can't speak very well because I have quite a lot of hay fever. Um, one thing, Milena, that I wanted to say to what you just said now is um, I think one thing that we also really need for movement building um, is basically show people alternatives to where to direct their anger because anger is a very productive emotion and there is obviously a lot of anger and the i mean i just finished reading the grapes of wrath so this is like the topic i'm i'm um i'm kind of uh, maybe a bit obsessed with right now but i really think that it's it's very 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 important for us as as left uh, as the left and as, as leftist movements to kind of really think about realistic ways and and very strategically to show those people that are suffering under the material under the material um conditions that they are in and that they're suffering from um alternatives to racism alternatives to you know um all these very negative consequences of this anger and tap them into something more constructive mm -hmm. and really try and show people that you know uh for instance that the environmentalist movement does not include pe uh, exclude people uh that for instance cannot buy organic meat and stuff because i do think that a lot of people do not join these causes because usually you know they are indeed excluded from it simply because of economic uh things or also same thing with feminism in Luxembourg you know or just Europe in general 
excluding uh, people of color a lot of times. So it's, I think it's really a key thing that after um, this whole Corona thing, we try and we really deeply think about how we can tap into, into anger uh, inside the population because it is there and it can be productive. So, yeah. Can I react to a couple of things that you guys said earlier? Sure. <clears throat> so basically, I want to start with uh, what uh, Raquel, uh, the point uh, that Raquel touched upon uh, with uh, uh, so society not being uh, the limited uh, character it, it is uh, depicted uh, by capitalism. Even Adam Smith, the father of modern capitalism said in all, at, the, at the very end of all of his theories that as brilliant as they were, they were not complete. And that there was one factor, especially human nature, that could, that would have to be at one point taken into account. So that is a very important thing to remember as well. Again, something that nobody tells you, nobody teaches you. Then with regards to what, uh, what Swain said uh, to this uh, cooperating uh, between uh, people, uh, it's a bonding, I think you, uh, you coined it. I hope that with especially the crisis that we are living through now, uh, that this will be one of the silver linings. I mean, all crises have shown that people have come together and have uh, have uh, put put uh, their, their 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 forces together and tried to put them into action. I hope that this will again be the case. This crisis, uh, this uh, during this crisis. But what I ask myself is that how many more crises do we have to travel as a people before we realize on a well before the broad majority of people man realizes that something has to be done or something different has to be done. And then touching on, uh, on what uh, Milena and uh, Natalie have um, talked about, I think also that um, the movement, uh, because people have been doing so well, they've had a lot of difficulties reaching the broad majority. But I've also seen, or we have seen throughout uh, the decade, and especially, and especially in the um, in, uh, in uh, the United States, you see it uh, in, a, in, 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 in its most uh, perfected form. You see, I think, like if you take Obama for example, he's like the he's like the superstar of of doing this. He's so politically smart. He tells something in an address, and like 99%, I'm exaggerating a bit, love the man because he said what he said. But actually, if you're a bit educated and read a bit between the lines, you see exactly that it is not really something that he wants to do for you, first thing. And the second thing is, most of the time when he said something, did he really do it? Probably not. And there I ask myself whether movements, uh, whether they are ecological, uh, feministic movement, uh, LGBTQ movement, or what, whatever they are, uh, like politically inclusive movements, they have, have they been too idealistic uh, throughout all those years? Because they have not gathered the broad majority. And I ask myself, do we don't do we not need to adopt a more pragmatic uh, approach to it all? And if not that, do we not need to market ourselves into in 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 a more in a more intelligent way in order to reach all the people that we need on our side in order to get the result uh, the results that we need to get? So I hope that the crisis uh, the the crisis that we live through. Uh, will help, uh, and especially that the system does not work uh, any longer for the many, that this helps uh, those, all those movements to, 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 to gather more fellowship 
And I also hope that the new generations, which, has, which have already proven that they can do it, but find new approaches and find new ways in order to uh, implement uh, new, new strategies in those movements that can be more successful uh, than they have been uh, since the, I don't know, since the 1960s, 1970s. Um, I'm just gonna quickly tell you that we have like three minutes left. So uh, I think it would be good to see who uh, would be able to report in the big group about what has been said and maybe do a recap um, between ourselves um, on what was like the key messages that we wanna take over to the, the big group. Who would feel um, comfortable doing so? And also, I think, Rakal, you wanted to say something. I don't know if it's still... Um, maybe I can say it just very fast. Yeah. I will make the summary, but I just wanted to say, like, yeah, maybe these are like baby steps, what happened with United for Climate Justice, but they are really crucial because they don't happen often, you know? If this happened once, what we need is to... I think the priorities of all these groups shouldn't be their own agenda, but to building an agenda together. Like in, in Canada, they did this with Naomi Klein just before Trudeau got elected. And they made, they got together workers from energy companies and indigenous communities, which are normally clashing with each other. Like for several days, they built an agenda. They said, okay, what's the vision of the future where we can all live together? And I think that was a very important step. It didn't succeed as it should have, but I think that's the way, I mean, we need to, get together more on the table and find our points in common. Yeah. And on the only other thing, the only other thing was like, I think Obama was a disaster of a president. I think that's why we have a Trump afterwards. So I wouldn't take these practicalities and let's be more like Obama. He, he's, um, I mean, he's very charismatic, but aside from that, he's a terrible, terrible politician. Well, maybe, maybe we, we need uh, charismatic left-wingers. <laughs> that's that's my answer to this question <laughs> um so who would uh, want to do the report <laughs> natalie would you want to do it <laughs> i must admit that i i am not so good at this I, I don't know if Maurice would like to do it because you did it already nearly. <laughs> <laughs> Maurice, did you uh, catch all the ideas and should we like go over them again? It's like the right to vote, uh, then the movements that we talked about. Um, the anger, I think that was a good point. Then what else? The solidarity between different groups and how they can like work together. Uh, uh, if, you you give me a, if you give me a couple of seconds, I will take a pen and I write all of it down and then I can present it. Okay. Because I have not noted everything, especially the point with the anger, I don't have it. So let's go through the ideas maybe one more time. Okay, so what I noted was the right to vote, that that was one of the biggest problems in Luxembourgish society and also one of the um, problems, or maybe it can be um, one of the factors to build the people. Um, with regards, with, that was with regards to especially uh, the, a lot of foreigners being residents in the country or, or working in the country being in yeah, I think active, it was, right? It's both uh, residents that are not able to vote and also people uh, not yeah. living in Luxembourg and still having a lot of their um, um, social and also working mm -hmm. uh, environment in Luxembourg. Uh, then you talked about civic, civic education. Then there was the whole thing with the movements, uh, the United for Climate Justice, um, the solidarity between the groups, the lesbians and gays for, for the minors, the women's uh, strike. 
And then there was the anger, uh, how to direct, redirect or direct anger um, and use it uh, for movement building, um, finding strategic ways to show people that are suffering under material conditions uh, that racism, etc., uh, is not a, a good response to, to anger or to, um, to injustices. What else? How, uh, how much time do I have to get um, the points uh, I across? I don't know, but I would say like two minutes. Like That's two a lot. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's not that much. <laughs> Uh, yeah, you'll, you're, you're, you'll regret saying it's a lot. <laughs> okay, are we good? Could we maybe, um, just the solidarity between movements, what are some of the talking points that you would like me to uh, have addressed there? Well, maybe that, well, we, we addressed a few uh, specific examples, um, like, for instance, uh, gays and lesbians for the minors, uh, or um, union participation uh, in the environmentalist movement in Luxembourg, um, like as so the, the, small the broad the broad message should be just that we see more solidarity between movements, and that should be that should be uh, cultivated basically. That's the yeah. exactly exactly that yeah. that there, but also that there are examples in real life. Yeah, you can give this. Yeah from the lesbians and gays for the minors and explain it a bit and then uh, explain that we also see it in Luxembourg and then um, the climate movement and the women's strike movement as examples. Okay, I think we need to go back. I'm gonna close the room now. See you soon. Bye. Le groupe anglais que je crois en train de revenir. Voilà. Donc voilà, je crois que nous sommes tous plus ou moins là. Euh, bon, euh, j'aimerais vous dire que dans le groupe français, en tout cas, ça s'est très bien passé. Je crois que c'était une bonne idée de faire des petits groupes et qu'on fera sûrement la même chose les prochaines fois. Um, we will try to make it bilingual again. So, um, it's... Um, I think it was a good idea to divide uh, into smaller groups, at least in the French group, it worked pretty well and it was really interesting. Um, I would suggest that from each group, one tries to make a summary of what has been discussed. Please keep it short, try to keep it in between two, three minutes maximum. Um, and then we'll make an overall uh, balance of it and uh, we will um, finish the second part of the webinar. So um, I would want to start with the English speaking group. I think that was Milena. Thank you. No worries. Maurice. Maurice is going to make the rest. Okay, okay. Uh, okay, so, so thank you. Um, I think our discussion was also very productive. Uh, we can't hear you very well. Is it only me? Yeah, we'll take the mic a bit closer. Okay, that's better. My that's already better. better. <laughs> okay. um, so I, I've already wasted 20 seconds of my two minute speech, so I'll uh, it's just okay. get right into it. Um, so we um, basically gathered uh, five main points uh, during our discussion. The first, of, uh, the first being uh, political inclusion, uh, meaning that here in Luxembourg we have a very uh, specific situation where we have uh, a lot of uh, foreign uh, residents and we also have a lot of uh, foreigners that, uh, that uh, work in our economy. All those people, or uh, I would say at least, uh, well, all the people, all the workers uh, that, uh, that, uh, live, uh, that don't live in the country and also a great uh, plurality of the, the, the residents, the foreign residents here in, uh, in the Luxembourg city do not have the right to vote so their voices are basically not heard where they are most active and where they live so that should in our opinion be a point that uh, should at least uh, be uh, discussed the second point that we discussed is that uh, there is a clear lack of uh, of uh, civic uh, education um, we here in luxembourg 
uh, as uh, as uh, students uh, in, in the primary education system, secondary education system. I don't know uh, how it looks like in the in the on the university level here in Luxembourg, but basically, if you are not uh, educated uh, in those areas at home, you will or in different clubs or movements or whatnot, you will not be exposed uh, to any political uh, or civic education, uh, which uh, leaves you quite uh, uneducated uh, to any uh, of the issues that uh, might uh, other people have to struggle with. So um, this uh, leads me to my next point, uh, which has been uh, discussed, is um, that humans during crises are able to bond and uh, they have shown so uh, throughout uh, the whole of uh, human history uh, the, the, the term bonding has been coined in our uh, discussion uh, you might also say cooperation uh, and so forth and this uh, of course is something that we see also uh, today and that we would like uh, to see uh, being more cultivated, especially by the people that are already active in all different kinds of movements, which is uh, the solidarity between movements so that movements uh, can gather together and tackle different causes uh, with their joint power. Uh, there have been uh, a couple of, uh, we've, we've have, uh, we, have, uh, we have discussed a couple of, uh, of those instances uh, in our group. Uh, which were basically uh, the, 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 the gays and lesbian movements, uh, for minors, uh, and uh, also uh, here in Luxembourg, uh, the, that, uh, that a lot of different movements were active uh, in uh, the, the, the women's strike, and also uh, that unions uh, participated in the ep uh, ecological movement. Then, as a last point, uh, we addressed uh, the, the emotion of anger, which uh, which is which basically most of uh, activism is uh, is uh, grounded in, and uh, we uh, talked about uh, how this emotion uh, might be used uh, as productively as possible uh, to. Uh, to, to to get the result the, the, the results uh, that are desired, meaning that uh, different uh, strategic approaches uh, should be uh, should at least be discussed, and uh, that the the, the 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 political approach in the different movements should be politically smart. Thank you. Thank you, Maurice. Um, je passerai peut-être au groupe. Uh... Luxembourgeois, donc je ne sais pas qui va faire euh, le petit résumé de ce que vous avez discuté. Yeah. Yes, I will pose like the the points that we we covered in the in the chat. Um, so we talked about how many people don't um, like are not aware of of the class, like the social classes, and uh, so the lack of class consciousness and awareness versus the, the civil servants, so the people that work for, for, the, uh, for the state. Mm -hmm. And um, so that many people don't, yeah, they don't really, they are not, not um, betraf, uh, concerned, or, no, concerned, concerned, yeah. yeah concerned. So they don't really think about these problems or they don't know them. Um, but then we also talked about how the housing problem in, in Luxembourg um, could, could lead especially young people to, to maybe form uh, a kind of group because they, they will more and more face the same situation that they won't be able to, to afford um, housing in Luxembourg. Um, yeah, and then the next uh, point is the right to vote for foreigners. So um, we basically talked about how how it is hard to really change uh, something in Luxembourg if if um, like foreigners don't have the right to vote in Luxembourg. 
and um, yeah, and transnational thinking. Uh, so that we just, I think this is a bit linked also to to the other point that um, we have to think across borders and a bit broader um, than like the national national borders. Well, I, I would I just ask you. Um, it's for me personally, but maybe to clarify it in the group. When you talk about the housing problem, is it something that you could see as unifying as a cause that unify more people? Uh, yeah, I, like um, I think that that was something also that I said that um, I feel like a lot of people that I know that maybe have like a, a good job, you could say, even those people fear um, that they can't afford uh, like housing in, Lux in Luxembourg and think about uh, going to, to other places to live or mm -hmm. even to live, to live together even if they want to for example live in a couple and they, they at least they fear or they already know that they, they can't afford it. Okay, so it could be a common problem of... Yeah I think that um, at that point maybe uh, like in that case maybe more young people could see that uh, even if I go to university I will uh, go back to Luxembourg and it will be very hard to yeah to be able to afford yeah. something yeah so I think that was everything for us like mm -hmm. short summary so we would go to the last one which is the French David um, oui. Un instant, je reprends mes notes. Donc, euh, je crois que tous les groupes ont un peu aussi tourné autour des mêmes questions, parce que forcément, c'est les questions centrales au Luxembourg. Donc, on a aussi beaucoup parlé. Euh, on a commencé par définir encore euh, le concept de peuple et, et comment on l'entend. Euh, on a aussi parlé de, des différents contextes linguistiques qui font que, ce, que cette notion de peuple a, a une, autre, euh, une autre signification. Euh, que c'est peut-être... Euh, en fait, la même chose que l'ancien concept de prolétariat, mais euh, qui, qui a, en tout cas, quelque chose qui a remplacé ce concept. Euh, on a dit que, donc, euh, dans cette stratégie donc, euh, populiste, ou comme on veut, définie par Chantal Mouffe, il y a aussi un, un point très important qui est celui de construire des frontières, donc euh, des antagonismes, des contradictions, et que tout le challenge, en quelque sorte, sera de construire un antagonisme du bas contre le haut, euh, euh, et d'éviter un antagonisme, par exemple, luxembourgeois contre étranger. On a parlé de la question de la, de la langue, qui est quand même très centrale de Luxembourg et autour de laquelle beaucoup de questions se, sont, se, se cristallisent. Euh, on a eu une définition qui était assez intéressante, c'est de dire ce peuple, euh, c'est euh, donc euh, un collectif en construction euh, qui, est, euh, qui, est, qui, qui applique toutes les personnes qui vivent des fruits de leur travail et qui exclut les rentiers, euh, tous ceux qui ne vivent pas de leur travail, en quelque sorte, qui vivent de l'argent. Euh, on s'est aussi posé la question, où est-ce que ce collectif peut-il se manifester Donc, notamment au niveau de la relation du, de travail, euh, des syndicats. On a dit que, voilà, on le voyait déjà actuellement, que donc, euh, le salariat qui manifeste, des gens qui, qui descendent dans la rue, qui ne sont même pas forcément luxembourgeois, ou qui, qui n'habitent même pas au Luxembourg. Donc, euh, on a déjà des débuts de construction d'un tel collectif. Évidemment, ce n'est pas la même situation euh, quand on parle de logement. Euh, on a aussi parlé de la question de la démocratie, qui, au-delà de la question du déficit démocratique, est très centrale au Luxembourg, notamment en ce qui concerne tout, euh, tout l'aspect de la place financière, euh, des institutions qui sont euh, minées par cette place financière, euh, euh, de la souveraineté démocratique qui, qui est minée par cette place financière. Euh, L'hypothèse a été émise que cette place financière, dans le cadre de la crise actuelle, pourrait éventuellement s'effondrer. Et donc, euh, quelle va être notre stratégie dans, dans, dans ce scénario-là euh, Comment on va procéder après Quelles seront les réponses qu'on pourra, qu qu pourra apporter euh, On a dit que, que ce qui comptait, c'était euh, d'être capable de construire une force politique capable d'agir et de réagir rapidement, et que c'est ça qui fera toute la différence, et que c'est maintenant qu'il faut, qu faut agir, dans les, jours et, enfin, dans les semaines et les mois à venir. Que, il y a quelqu'un qui a dit, c'était assez intéressant aussi, que finalement la question du droit de vote dans la, dans la situation actuelle était peut-être euh, en quelque sorte secondaire parce que les prochaines élections au Luxembourg, c'est en 2023 je crois, euh, ou en 2022-2023, donc la question du droit de vote, elle se posera à ce, ce moment-là où, où euh, 
vers, enfin, plus, plus on s'approche de, de cette échéance-là, mais que la construction du collectif, du collectif dont on parle doit se faire maintenant, ici et tout de suite, parce qu'on n'a pas le temps. <rire> on n'a pas le temps d'attendre jusqu'en 2023. On a par, parlé aussi du lien un peu organique entre la place financière et le, le, les, les résidents, voire les gens qui travaillent au Luxembourg, avec le niveau de vie qui est garanti. Comment faire pour rompre ce lien, mais comment faire aussi pour organiser l'après-place financière où il faut un travail des syndicats, des mouvements sociaux, des partis pour, 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 pour élaborer un monde après place financière. Et pour finir, on a pris donc aussi le, la grève des femmes comme exemple positif, très très positif, de comment on peut réussir à construire une dynamique, à construire euh, un acteur ou des acteurs politiques capables d'agir et comment on, vraiment en labourant le terrain, en étant au plus proche des gens, en s'organisant au plus proche des gens, on pouvait vraiment construire quelque chose de significatif et construire un mouvement euh, important qui peut servir et qui doit servir aussi d'exemple pour toutes les mobilisations à venir. Euh, voilà, donc on a un peu fait le tour des trois groupes euh, en terminant un peu sur une euh, note positive qui est la grève des femmes qui, euh, bon, en fait, je suis un peu suspecte, mais je trouve que ça a vraiment été une mobilisation euh, dont on peut tous euh, vraiment tirer beaucoup de leçons et il faut qu'on continue à travailler dans cette direction. Donc, on va un peu conclure pour aujourd'hui. Euh, nous allons, comme la dernière fois, vous voyez un résumé des discussions que nous avons eues aujourd'hui. Euh, nous sommes aussi à chaque fois contents quand vous nous donnez un peu de feedback et nous, vous nous dites ce que vous avez bien aimé, ce que vous n'avez pas trop aimé, parce que pour nous, Zoom et, et ce genre de, de séminaire en ligne, ou de débat en ligne, est quelque chose d'assez nouveau aussi. Donc, euh, ce serait chouette qu'on construise ensemble une plateforme où on est tous confortables pour participer et, et parler. Et, euh, et voilà, donc on vous enverra l'email avec euh, le planning pour la, la prochaine fois et le résumé de cette fois-ci. Et je dirais que s'il si, y a encore quelqu'un qui veut dire quelque chose avant qu'on se dise au revoir pour aujourd'hui. Non, tout le monde a déjà trop parlé. Donc je crois qu'on que, qu on on en finit là. Ok, bah merci à tout le monde pour avoir participé et pour ce débat très enrichissant. Et on se voit la semaine prochaine. Ciao, ciao et bon week-end. Merci, bonne soirée.